A common method of designing parts using the master modeling approach is to build the master model, separate the parts using the split command or similar methods, and then save each of the parts into their own part files. This is referred to as the push method, which I'll demonstrate in this lesson by using this model of a plastic enclosure for electronics. Here you can see the enclosure has been created as a base model and split into parts that I've labeled as top and bottom. Additionally, each part has been shelled with a lip and groove feature added afterwards to create a reveal where the two parts meet during assembly. From here, I'd like to save out each of these parts into separate files where I can modify them. Then, I'll bring them into an assembly where I can add electronic components, such as the LCD screen on the top. This is where the Save Bodies command comes in handy by pushing each component into its own part file. I'll do this by right-clicking on the Solid Bodies folder and selecting Save Bodies. From the Command Manager, I'll check both the components in the resulting parts folder to be saved out, and choose to Propagate Visual Properties. I'll also start a new assembly by clicking the Browse button under the Create Assembly section, navigate to where I'd like to create the assembly, name it New Enclosure, click Save to create the assembly file, and when I click OK to finish the command, SOLIDWORKS saves and opens each component in separate part files along with the new assembly file. Notice also the Save Bodies command has been added to the feature tree, indicating that the push method was used with this file as the master model. At this point, any new features added past the Save Bodies command in the tree won't propagate to the child components when this model is saved. You can, however, move the rollback bar before this command and add new features that will be passed down to the child components. I'll switch over to the base part that was just created. And you'll notice a complementary feature labeled as Stock shows up in this feature tree. The same is true for the top part, which you can see when I switch over to it. The assembly file created contains both child components without any mates applied and looks identical to the master model. Suppose I'd like to change to the top part by removing its top face so that I can recess the LCD screen deeper into the enclosure and make room for electrical connections. Which file I perform this operation on makes a difference in how it propagates to other files. Let me show you. I'll do this by switching back to the top part file, starting a sketch on the top face, and offsetting its perimeter inward by 0.375 inches. Next, I'll use the Sketch Fillet tool to round its edges. Box select the corners, set the radius value to be 0.15 inches, and click OK. Finally, I'll create a Cut Extrude set to Through All and pointed downward. Apply a draft angle of 1 degree, and click OK to create the cutout. Now I'll save the file. But notice when I switch to the master model file, the feature doesn't appear on this part. However, when I switch to the newly created assembly file, the cutout is present. This is because the top and base part files are derived from the master model and serve as building blocks of the assembly file, meaning that changes made to them won't affect the master model, but will update in the assembly. Choosing to update the part inside the master model, on the other hand, will impact the master model in addition to the child components and the assembly. To demonstrate this, I'll make a change to the overall dimensions of the top component in the master model. One way to trace back to the master model is to select the top part, choose Open Part from the Context Toolbar, right-click on the Stock feature in the Feature tree, and choose Edit in Context. This opens the master model file, where I can edit the initial sketch under the first Boss Extrude feature, change the half-width dimension to be 3 inches, and rebuild the part. Now I'll switch back to my top part to view the change, and when I switch over to the assembly and rebuild it, the width modification propagates here too.